Today's project is going to be a collage that you can make with materials that you have lying around the house. Now, you may be someone like me who collects nice wrapping paper and old drawings, and you may have a lot of sort of materials somewhere in your house. Like for example, I have this box of just paper that I like that I keep around the house or you may not be that person and you may be looking for collage materials other, in other places in your house. Either way, I'm gonna show you how we can use some of those materials to make um, some interesting artwork. So all you need for this is a piece of paper that is gonna be your base piece of paper. I'm using this, you want it to be a, a fairly heavy piece of paper if you have it. I'm using a piece of white drawing paper that has a little bit of weight. If you don't have that, no worries. Really any paper will do. I'm sitting here on the floor because that's what I like to do when I make art, is sit on the floor. You definitely need a pair of scissors and some glue. Could be nice glue like Elmer's. Um, I'm gonna be using Mod Podge, which is one of my favorites because it uh, has a nice shine to it when it's dry, so it's often used for an art form called decoupage. So I use Mod Podge with a brush, but if what you have is Elmer's glue lying around, that will do just as well. What else do you need? Well, I've gathered some different types of paper that you can use in, in your collage that you might have in your house. So I this is just old construction paper, some of it which has been used in the past, but that doesn't matter. I have, I went through my mail. Junk mail often has a lot of great images and colors. We're actually looking for color. So junk mail is a great source of material. Old magazines. Some of us don't keep magazines around the house much anymore, but if you have them, they are also a really good source of collage material. What else do I have? Some old post-it notes. I have, I found this, it's an old Lego cartoon. And what I like about it is that it's got some really bright colors. So that will be useful for what we're doing. Random paper, don't even know where this came from. We'd be going, I got it in my recycling bin but it's gonna work. Um, light cardboard, I wouldn't use heavy cardboard for this, but if you have light cardboard like this hefty box or the cereal box, that kind of lightweight cardboard can work really well for this project. And then the other thing I tend to have a lot around, you may have some, is wrapping paper. Wrapping paper that you don't need or that you tore off a gift, and so it's already not very usable is perfect for a project just like this. Okay, so those are all the materials you need and now we're ready to get started. Your next decision is what kind of image you wanna make. Do you want to do something that is an abstract image? In other words, that doesn't have recognizable uh, imagery in it? Or do you wanna do something that is more realistic? And that is entirely up to you. It also may depend on the age of the child you're working with because a small child can do a scribble which can be a great basis for this project and an older child might want to draw something that is more representational so here's two ideas basically i took a sharpie but it could you could use any pen and i you want to make a drawing that this is my abstract one and i just did this it's a scribble i didn't plan it out but you want to make sure that you're drawing does two things. One, that it fills up the whole page, and two, that it has a lot of different sections. I'm looking at this and I don't even think mine has enough sections. You wanna, so I'm actually gonna add more sections into it. So I did this, scrib this scribble and now I'm gonna add, I'm just gonna divide, keep some lines going because the more sections you have, um, well, you'll see later why that will start to matter. So I'm filling, I'm gonna actually create more sections, different shapes, 
Okay, I'm gonna do a little shape there, there, but I'm filling up the whole page and I'm making sure that it's subdivided. Now, if you do a representational drawing, then you also want to have that same um, sort of outline shape. So I did a fish and I just did the outline of the fish. I didn't do any shading and I didn't do any coloring. And again, I've divided, I've filled up the whole page with my drawing and I've divided up my fish into sections, into these sections. And I'm gonna even do more of that. It's almost like you, you're getting ready to make a stained glass. Okay, so the next step is fun. The next step comes, we assign colors to each shape. I will show you what I mean. So I'm still using my pen and I'm using my fish drawing and I'm going to just start going in and assigning randomly based on colors that I like, um, that each shape is gonna have a color. This one's gonna be blue. This one's gonna be purple. My fish is gonna be very bright and rainbowy. Pink, red, brown. And you can have your artist just go through and start assigning the different um, shapes in the drawing with different colors. Okay, here's my fish and he, I have finished labeling all the different areas, the colors that I want them to be. There's no rules for this. Um, and now the fun part starts, which is that I start looking at my materials and finding colors that match the spaces. Now, I'm not gonna do this with scissors because I actually think it looks better and more interesting when you rip the paper. I, I just think it, it gives it a nice look. But if you are an exacting kind of person and you want to use scissors so that your shapes are very um, precise, then you are welcome to do that. And I will show you how um, my first color is going to be green, and I will show you how I will begin tearing out pieces of green and attaching it, gluing it down on my paper. I've started with green, and what I've done is I've ripped out, I've found different kinds of green, and that's the fun of this, is finding, it doesn't have to be, this one's more of a, piece was more of a bluish green, and this is a greener green. And I'm just ripping the pieces out. Look, I'm not even worrying too much about the, the lines. And I'm gluing them down. If you're using Mod Podge and you're doing a sort of decoupage technique, what you want to do is first you want to dip your paint your space with the Mod Podge, then place down the piece of paper and then dip again, and you're covering it as a kind of glaze. And what's nice about that is it, when it dries, it'll dry clear and shiny, and it will sort of blend all of these different pieces together. So the fun of this is looking through your materials and actually finding all the different kinds, right now we're working on green, all the different kinds of green that we have. So, so here I am, I'm farther along in the project, as you can see. And I've learned some things as I've been doing this. One thing that I've learned is that I decided not to do the background at all. I decided that if I did the background, it would just, the fish would, I would lose my fish, the fish would blend too much into the background. So I have a plan for that, which I'll share with you in a minute. But uh, right now, for right now, I'm just focusing on getting the colors on the body of the fish. So one of the things I've learned is that there are some areas where I want bigger shapes. So for example, for the lips, which I had labeled red, I found this sort of, this paper, and I decided to just do two large shapes to define the lips. But for other places, I thought it looked nicer to have a lot of small colors that just blend together, with this sort of green pink area. I think I may even keep going over it with smaller and smaller pieces to because I want to sort of suggest the the ripples of the of the scales. So I want that maybe to start to be smaller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably keep going in this area, 
with smaller and smaller pieces on top as I go. And the other thing I noticed is that some of the paper I thought was the least interesting turned out to be the most interesting. So this recycled pa paper from my recycling bin that has its coffee stained actually came out really interesting in this because the coffee sort of gave it a, a sort of sense of shading and depth that I hadn't expected. So there's all kinds of nice surprises in this process and you're welcome to change the rules as you go. Uh, I've saved the eye for last because I've decided I want to do a pretty precise circle for the eye. Um, whereas I've been ripping all of these pieces for the eye, I'm going to actually cut a circle so that it stands out. And then I will catch up with you in a little while and show you what I've decided to do for the background. So here's another discovery I made in this process. I cut, as I said, I was gonna, I cut out a circle for the eye because I wanted it to stand out with by being a more clean shape than the ripped shapes that I've been using. And yet I found that it still got lost in all the other colors. So I just, what I decided to do was I cut out an even bigger circle that has in this bright lime color and putting the darker circle on top. And, and when the Mod Podge dries, then the eye will stand out from the rest of the, the fish's body, or at least that's my hope. What's so fun about making art is that in the process, you realize that you have to make adjustments to your plan. So for example, I started noticing as I was putting down all of this color that I've left these little white spaces because the shapes were ripped out and not even, there were these white spaces, these little gaps, and they were kind of annoying me, and I wanted to make sure that I do something about them before I finish my piece. There's another couple. So the last step that I decided to do was to cut out very small pieces that don't correspond in particular to any of the underlying color themes, but just simply cover up those white spaces and maybe you know, I started to think, how am I going to give the sense of this being having of this fish having um, fins and gills and sort of scales? That's the word I'm looking for, scales. How am I going to give that sense? And I decided to, even though I'd been ripping the whole time, I decided to use my scissor to cut out some fairly repetitive shapes that I'm going to place on the top in various places to give that sense of scales. And that will all, those will also cover up the annoying little white bits. So that was my learning from this part, this last part of the process. That there's a finishing process where you get into some of the details of your piece. Okay, so I feel like my fish is basically done at this point, but now I've run into the problem of the background because I'm pretty sure if I do the background the way that I just did the fish, and we'll lose the definition and the outline of the fish. So instead of doing collage on the background, I've decided to cut my fish out and paste the entire fish onto a contrasting color of paper. So let's see how that works. And here he is. I've cut out the fish. I placed him on a blue piece of paper, uh, which had some collage on it already little bit here and there. And now I'm gonna glue him down really well and I'm gonna give the whole thing a coat, of, another coat of Mod Podge. And I really like how he came out and I hope you do too. If you're interested in learning more about collage, I highly recommend that you go online and look at images of some collage artists like Romare Bearden, who is, was known for beautiful collages of his neighborhood. Pablo Picasso was also one of the pioneers of collage in 20th century American art history. And it's worth looking at some of the work that he did using materials that he found around um, that in, in, his, in his world. So I think that's one of the wonderful things about collage is that it reflects and incorporates materials that we live with every day. So a piece of our lives actually get glued in to the piece that you're making. I hope that you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed working on it with you and I would love to see the work that you come up with.